Hi everyone, it's Carol Keller, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator from Illinois in the United States. Thanks for joining me. We are going to use the Hydrangea Hill Suite. I've been having so much fun playing with it for the last few days. I designed several cards for a class that I have coming up this week. And um, today we're going to do a scrapbook page because I just couldn't stop playing with it. I will turn my camera around right away so that we can get started. All right, today we're using the Hydrangea Haven stamp set and the fabulous Hydrangea dies, one of which I have in my hand here. We're using some of those. I've been having fun playing. I've used most of them, but not all of them yet. And the same thing with the stamps. But this suite also contains... A few other wonderful things some gorgeous designer series paper totally my favorite color palette especially those the blues and the purples all of them and I'm so sad because Rococo Rose and Purple Posy are going to be retiring and Seaside Spray also are going to be retiring which makes me so sad because I love them and I know we'll get some new wonderful in colors here's the back of the papers too but in the meantime, I know I'm going to miss those a lot. And then also as part of the suite is this fabulous Hydrangea Hill Mercury Glass Designer Acetate. And it comes in Rococo Rose and Highland Heather. And this is one of the designs with the little circles. Here, I'll take one away so you can see. And then the other design is more of like a splotchy look. So you get two sheets in each color one of each design and of course we have our gorgeous grape sheer ribbon as part of the suite too and last but not least the pastel pearls which you can see have been well used and we will be using them today so let me show you the project for today i used <laughs> it caught me i used repositionable adhesive a removable adhesive because I really <laughs> I'm not sure where I'm gonna put my pictures so that's tentative so this is actually one design we're gonna do something that's got the same layout but with different papers from the um, paper pack the designer series paper pack but this is the idea of the layout that we're going for so I'm gonna take that out of the way and we will get started with a piece of basic white 12 by 12 and these are the papers that we're going to be using today. Also, again, from that same designer series paper pack. So let's start by getting those down. I'm going to start with my multi-purpose liquid glue for the first one. So that we can position it right to the edge of that cardstock. I'm going to move these aside for a moment. And I'm going to actually put it on sideways to you because I need to see all three of the edges. Hopefully you can see this. Let me move it up just a little bit. All right. Well, there's number one. And I think for the rest, well, for the rest, I am going to use my multi-purpose liquid glue. And again, I'm going to turn this sideways just because it's easier and butt it right up against the first one and make sure that it's covering both edges. There we go. Oh yeah, just like that should be good. It's the nice thing about the glue is you can position before it dries. And last but not least, the larger piece. Make sure it's right side up. For the other two papers, it doesn't matter, but for this one, it certainly does. And there we have our base. Aren't those papers just gorgeous? Ugh, I love all of them. All right, for the next part, we are going to do some stamping. So I'm going to bring in a scrap of paper. And the first thing I'm going to use is the flower and leaf stamp from the set. And I'm stamping it in memento black because I want the detail to be able to show when I use the other colors. And when you have a stamp that's bigger than your ink pad, it's easier to bring the ink pad to the stamp. Normally I do it the other way around. OK, 
Okay, now we're going to add some detail, some color. So there's a stamp in there that's a fill color for the flower. And if you are doing more than one color, which I did for this, make sure you start with your light color and go to your dark ones. Normally it doesn't matter. I mean, you're cleaning in between, hopefully, hopefully anyway, otherwise you're going to end up with muddy brown. But the problem is, I think I'll grab the cocoa rose. The problem is that if you have a darker color and it doesn't come all the way off, you're going to end up with, you are going to end up with more of a muddy color. So it's always best to work from light to dark. But I'm just going to stamp one so that you can see the idea. And the outline is not an exact match for the stamp. And the reason is it's more of a watercolor look. So you can see it, it hits just about everything though if you position it the right way. And I even have a little overlap with the leaf, but I'm not concerned about that. And then next I'm going to grab my old olive to do the leaves. And it's the same thing. It's not an exact match. And I found that the easiest thing to do is sort of, as you get closer and closer, you can position so that it hits most of the, the leaves in the stem. Pretty good. I am happy with that. Because then what you're going to do is you're going to take the die, the companion die, and you're going to cut it out. And the best way to do that is to match up the stem. I'm going to stand up to do this so I can see it better. But so that you can see the stem and the edges of the leaves. And basically not to worry too much about the flower. Maybe down just a little bit. And that's how I would lay it out. And then cut it out with my stamp and cut and emboss machine. But of course, I have already done that part. And that is all of our stamping for right now. I'm not going to worry about a title. Because as you can see from the first one, there is place for a title up here, and I used the pattern paper, the same one that's here, and I'm going to do the same thing for this. But I don't know when I'm going to title it yet, so I didn't do one. But that's where I'm planning for it. So I have the pattern paper there to be ready. And I'll bring that aside. That's going to go up here. But first, I have my flowers that I cut. I cut seven of them. And how I did it on the other page was I took one of each color, we'll use this one, and I positioned them up here, but I'm not going to use all of the, the stems and leaves. I'm going to use actually just two. So I just have to decide how I want them to go. Because I did pop this one up. Maybe that will be good. And you can see here there's a little place where there it didn't get inked. One thing you can do is just when you, after you stamp the first time, if you see a white space, just move your stamp and stamp again. So it would be lighter like some of this, but it would help cover it. The other thing that I did was just take my snips and cut around it a little bit, just sort of moving it this way and that because nobody knows when they see your flower that you've done that and it gets rid of that little white space so that's another solution too but yeah I think we will cut this one off and use it on the back so all I did was cut the stem and the leaves off and move them up toward the top so I'm going to adhere that one first and again, I've got white spaces. I'm just going to put those underneath where I know they're not going to really show as much. No one will be the wiser. And then we will do this one. All right, I think that'll be good right there. And then this one I'm going to pop up with dimensionals. And just lay it down over here. So that the stems are sort of next to each other. I think I am going to put this down, but I'm going to cheat. Don't tell anyone. I'm using removable adhesive because, again, I may need a bigger title. 
Oh, that's right. And before we do that, actually, well, it doesn't matter because it's repositionable. We have to put some ribbon on there first. All right. And now for the, I did some in the opposite corner as well. Again, one of each color. And you'll see that I didn't even stamp this because all of the leaves are going to end up being cut off because I felt like they got lost um, with the background paper. More so with the other one than for this one. Maybe we'll leave one. Let's see. Let's see how we want to do it. Leave this behind. But yeah, and plus the... It sort of goes the wrong way. I think we are going to cut those off. So it's up to you. And again, it depends on which paper you choose to use. This one is a little less busy than the one I used for the other one. Let's see. Yeah, maybe we'll pop this one up this time. So same thing. Just going to put it down with my stamp and seal. We'll do the seaside spray. Oh my goodness, I'm going to miss these colors. And so you know, the retiring list comes out tomorrow. So if you are looking to order something, do it soon. Any of the in colors because they are definitely going. And they're going to go quickly. They're, you know, they're only available while supplies last. And then the last one, we're just going to cut off that stem. And this one I actually did, I used... For this and for this, I stamped off the Highland Heather first and then did, so it's second generation here and here, and this is full strength. And I'm going to cut around this, well, maybe I won't because I think it'll be, if the white is there, it's not going to matter, the white background. So I'm not going to worry about that. All right, next we are going to position our mats. So I already cut several of them. And we'll see. I think we'll do... I slid one underneath this way, like that. I think that looks pretty good because we're going to put some ribbon on. And I'm actually not using the ribbon that is in the suite. I'm using instead Rococo Rose because I thought that would be nice for this. So I'm going to take a glue dot and I'm going to angle the ribbon. down in this corner and I want to make sure there's no glue on the front so that when I do put a photo in there I'm just gonna slip it right in that little pocket got it all right so this is gonna lay right here and then I put ribbon around this one Again, doing the same thing so that I can slip a photo right in there. And this one's going to lay here. And then I put, um, I actually put on the other one ribbon and then I tied a little knot. I don't know, that ribbon is much more sheer than this one, so I'm not sure how it's going to work. But I think we will give it a try. All right, so this is going to go up here, and I think we're just going to leave that. I don't think I'm going to try and tie a knot. So that's where our title will go. And, and I think this one I'm going to bump up with adhesive 2, with uh, dimensional 2. And there'll be room again to slip. If it's at the top of that mat, there'll be room to slip in a photo. Yeah, I think we'll do it like this. So, our page is almost done. But, you know, it's not done till we add the bling. So I'm going to take my Take Your Pick tool. And I just... Let's get some fresh putty on here to pick it up. Okay, time for bling. Now that we've got some putty. So, I just alternated... The colors. I'm going to use the seaside spray here and I think we'll use the Rococo Rose on this one and then the same thing in the other corner. Let's see 
some side spray. And we'll use actually the Highland Heather and the Rococo Rose. Whoops. Come on, it flipped over on me. Let's try that again. Try that again. There we go. Perfect placement every time. All right, what do you think? Do you like the first one or the second one? I'll bring the first one back in. I will tell you I love them both. It's fabulous color palette. So there's the first one that used the gorgeous grape ribbon that comes. See, and I tied the little knot up here. And here is the second one. Same exact layout, but just different, slightly different color palette because of the different pattern papers. So feel free to post in the comments which one you like better. I almost think I like this one better, but I do like both of them. And that's it. That's our page for today. Like I said, I'm not going to lay out the mats because I'm going to wait until I actually have photos to do that. But thanks so much for joining me, and um, I will see you again next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.